Hey guys, this is Hannah Lippitz with the Gaula Vision Gaula Key Concept Series, and this video is our relationship with the physical world. The bureau is done. The physicality of the world has been refined. Everything is ready for the Gaula. We're going to talk about those concepts in this video. So we touched in the very first video about what is Gaula, about the concept of bureau, and in tons of the other videos on this website on the main content page you'll find me discussing this discussing the implications of what's changed I'm gonna tell you now you can't just watch these little key concept nutshell videos and thinks you and think you've got it <laughs> these concepts are complex they need to be lived with I'm just giving you these little points to kind of start you thinking I'm giving you the nutshell I'm giving you the seed but those seeds need to grow and all the implications you need to do the avoda you need to do the work to unpack that but I'm just gonna give you kind of the foundations here so we talked about the fact that throughout history there were sparks of truth the truth of the godly reality glimpses of this consciousness of this godly energy um, embedded within the physical world fused together with dark energy and what is the essence of dark energy the essence of dark energy is that it produces a fragmented illusory experience of reality and of myself that i exist separate from my source i exist separate from the oneness of god somehow god forbid to the point that i can walk around not even believing that there's a god thinking that the concept of god is stupid god forbid it's to that degree that this illusory consciousness overtook the world and that we throughout history lived out this you know fragmented consciousness and we see this history was a very dark place for all peoples full of unspeakable cruelty and suffering and insanity um but we see that as the um as we progressed throughout history of doing this beer through traveling to all the corners of the world the jewish people being exiled from the land and spread by Hashgacha Pratis, by divine providence, by this from the spiritual worlds above, guided to all the four corners of the earth, into every possible circumstance and situation that we could imagine. And the Jewish people retaining a God consciousness in those places and connecting to God through deeply learning Torah, which is meant to be a, a transformative consciousness experience through reorienting their consciousness through learning Torah and through doing mitzvahs and ultimately as the world began to brighten and clarify we were able to bring the deeper wisdom out from within our Torah from within ourselves and ultimately begin spreading it to all the other peoples of the world as as the light bearers that we are ultimately meant to be we successfully the Lubavitcher Rebbe announced to us in 1991 completed the bearer we finished elevating all of the sparks and the Rebbe also announced that we finished purifying the physical world now one of the first places that the Rebbe announced that we finished the bearer is in his sicha his talk on the Parsha of Vayishlach of um, 1990 it was either 1991 or 1992 I will put the source below so off the top of my head I can't remember which year the Rebbe said we're no longer doing a beer instead we are now doing a special service to bring the revelations of the Geula Bapol in actuality to activate the Geula reality below a lot of people who they know the beer they under they know the beer of Voda the elevating the sparks the purifying the physical world of Voda um, the Rebbe announces I believe it's in Parshas Mikates of uh 1991 or 1992 again i'll put the sources um that we finished purifying the physical world and our bodies and the nations and everyone and everything is ready so what does that mean for us what does that mean for us what are the implications of this so throughout history we had to be very careful of our relationship with the physical world because of the darkness the klipas the sheker the lies and illusions that were intrinsically fused with the things and the concepts of this world they they were so the darkness was so powerful that by over engaging in physicality we could so easily be sucked into and lost within this illusory consciousness and it would take lifetimes and Gilgulim to, to extract ourselves from the spiritual damage we caused by getting sucked into that darkness and becoming a vehicle for perpetuating it God forbid 
of engaging in things with no higher intent you know for the sake of total selfish self gratification with no thought of god with no connecting the thing to god through our consciousness through our awareness um, as we engaged it through engaging it within the context of its godly purpose as spelled out to us in jewish law in torah and in mitzvahs that's how we were meant to navigate the world and 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 keep that consciousness um aligned so once the Rebbe announces to us that the beer is done and the physical world has been um, purified, we now have the ability to become embodied in a new level, to be in our bodies, to be in the physical world. Whenever I have a, a, a desire for something physical, maybe I want to get a new couch because I want my house to be prettier. Maybe I have a desire, you know, I just, I would love to just sit quietly with a cup of coffee right now. Maybe I have a desire to take up horseback riding, something like that, I don't automatically have to be like, oh, that's gosh, oh, that's physical, oh, that's so this world. Now we know that Hasidus teaches us that this world, this physical world and all the seemingly mundane things within it are actually the vehicle to my deepest, most intimate connection and relationship to the essence of God himself. So now... When I do the inner work to figure out where are my desires coming from, is this desire for the new couch coming from my soul? I want to feel the pleasure of living in a beautiful home, and this is a concept in Torah, that um, a beautiful home expands the mind. And why do we want an expanded mind? Why do we want to expand through kosher pleasure? Because when my mind is expanded, I can connect more deeply with God. I get a deeper awareness and visceral, physical, conscious experience of God in this world. That's where it's at. That's why God created all of these worlds. That's why God created the whole, as people who learned Hasidus know, Seder, Hishtalshalis, culminating in this physical world to have a dear betach tainim. That's dear betach tainim. That's the dwelling place down here in this lowest physical world that God so deeply desires and wants. That's why he created everything, is to be revealed down here. When we say that God dwells somewhere, we mean that he is consciously accessible. And it's specifically down here in this lowest physical world that we can actually have the highest and deepest most intimate relationship with him and since the beer is done and the physical world has been purified it's safe now to become embodied it's safe now to settle the land meaning to settle into our bodies into our physical world into our physical experience here and we can trust ourselves when we do the work to to heal to clarify what's going on in me what's going on in my inner world and we begin to trust our desires for kosher gosh me for kosher physicality for things that are you know within our rishos that are permissible to use and engage in and we do so with a sense of inner peace and joy and pleasure we are connecting to and revealing god in everything in our lives that's dear betachtonim